हरि 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 ओम तस् हरि ओम तस् जय गुरु जय गुरु जय गुरु आई एम वंडरिंग हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू वेरी क्लियरली विदाउट एनी डाउट वाट सो एवर नो दैट द पाथ ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिटी completely consists upon consists consists of introspection particularly truthful introspection introspection everyone generally does if he is intelligent but all that introspection will be about the world worldly life worldly attainments what was done in the day and so many things about it but that is not truthful introspection truthful introspection is that where you introspect over the supreme truth over the supreme truth what is the supreme truth i think you can think about it introspect over it and arrive at a conclusion that you should in your lifetime the earlier do we you do the better <coughs> sage vasishta tells the 16 year old prince sri rama in ayodhya in the palace where along with rama his own father father mothers ministers palace officials citizenly chiefs and so many others had assembled to listen to what the sage was telling sri rama mind you he was 16 years old he had completed the lessons of archery and then he wanted to make a pilgrimage he took the permission of the father to go on a pilgrimage along with a good retinue he went on the pilgrimage for the first time exiting from the palace of ayodhya he was very expectant that the pilgrimage would be a very holy and exposural one he expected to have a great joy and fulfillment from the pilgrimage but alas it proved to be otherwise Sri Rama started traveling from one region to another region one state to another state maybe one kingdom to another country as well many of you do not know that pilgrimage is a great exposure in human life in terms of education and educational glory and fulfillment nothing can match a good holy pilgrimage provided you undertake it any pilgrimage should be taken up you should walk 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 going from place to place place to place the moment you exit from your own hometown or village naturally nobody will know you many experiences will face you every one of them will be very enriched and don't think the experience will uniformly be either pleasant or unpleasant it will be what the world consists of you have not seen the world but during the pilgrimage you will be seeing it so sri rama started passing from one place to the other and to his surprise he found that the pilgrimage pilgrimage was not one of joyousness as he had contemplated upon he could see people in various situations various situations sometimes he used to interact with them at least briefly enquiring into what they thought felt and said far from giving him fulfillment it totally agitated his mind and settled his understanding if at all he
he had in any way and sridama returned totally disappointed dejected and forlorn his affliction was so much that he stopped all his morning routines getting up in the morning taking bath doing his ablutions going to his father prostrating before him giving respects to the mother etc rama was totally different he was he was a picture of utter melancholy melancholy utter affliction and grief those were days when the princes the sons would be living in their own respective palaces and the king would be occupying the main palatial building they would not be freely mixing as perhaps in the present day so desarada came to know that he was utterly dejected totally different but he could hardly do anything because rama would not speak anything at all Vasishta, coming to know of the plight, asked the father to get the prince to his friend. Rama came. Vasishta asked him, "My dear son, what is your problem? Tell me." Rama started exposing whatever he saw, whatever he felt, and whatever he was in the end. This itself, Rama's narration at first. is a great enlightening episode in our life i would like every one of you to read it now i am serializing in our monthly journal vichar sedu the last portion of yoga vasishta ramayana where sage vasishta's instruction to rama is actually concluding having fulfilled its purpose and role maybe after i complete it i may take up the narration of the first part of yoga vasishta ramayana it is very very enlightening if you are intelligent and you propose to live as a human in this world you should read what rama said otherwise we will have been living in this world in a world his whose nature we really do not know at all at all at all says vasishta took up the task of talking to sri rama ceaselessly and the dialogue lasted for 18 days from morning to evening halfway through Sri Rama, Sri Rama sat absolutely absorbed in his own inner ecstatic silence provided by the soul. Not only Rama, many others in the audience also were similarly seated in their own inmost depth. When Rama recovered from the silence, Vasishta continued to speak, and finally. Rama reached a state where he was absorbed and there was no symptom of his coming back to a wakefulness then Vishwamitra and the others prevailed upon Sri Rama and uh, upon Sage Vasishta that he was a young prince and he had a lot of work to do so Vasishta should use his yogic powers and bring him back to the normal wakefulness Vasishta did so and then started giving him how a life of interaction itself can be excelling a life of absorption rama finally said i am illumined i am enlightened by your grace he said if you will tell me the way to overcome this misery caused by the world first of all is there a way to address the grievance if there is do you know it if you know it will you tell me 
If you tell me, can I understand it and utilize it? If the answer to any of these questions is a no, then this Rama will not eat and drink. He will not take up any activity or interaction of a prince. Like a picture painted on the wall, Rama would remain Rama would remain still. He will not think of anything except in the fall of the body. The same Rama said, I shall eat, I shall drink, I shall take up my activity as a prince and whatever is necessary I shall, provided you bless me for that. I think this is a story every one of you should know, especially because in a democratic country that India is, According to the administration, which depends upon the judiciary, the parliament and the executive, by a specific order of the Supreme Court, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet were asked to form a committee and go ahead with the construction of a beautiful temple, which will depict the greatness and the glory of Sri Rama as a prince, as a king, as a ruler. That is the relevance. And the construction is going on. Next year we are going to inaugurate it. Imagine. Imagine. If you have the power of imagination. This happened in Tridayuga countless millennia ago. How do we know it? From a text which Sage Valmiki, the ascetic Valmiki wrote. We have not seen the Grantha he wrote. We have not seen him. Nor have we seen his hermitage. But somehow our forefathers have preserved what Valmiki wrote. Wrote! 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 I would like to emphasize the word millions of times because the writing is before us. So the author cannot be absent. He cannot be doubted. Without a change of syllable, 24,000 Sanskrit verses have been preserved by our people. Those who read it, many felt, many felt greatly elevated. Everyone was feeling that what, is, what they were reading were, was true, was true. And some of them started narrating what they read to the others. Some of them picked them up, they also became narrators. And, and the matter, the legacy started spreading to the nooks and corners of India. How such a tremendous educational spread could have been achieved is a matter for all of the, particularly the present government to inquire into and find out. What was the system of education whereby this great legacy was preserved without a change of syllable, all the 24,000 Sanskrit verses. Now I wanted to finish with one statement. What is that? During the course of his narration, Sage Vasishta was emphasizing, Sri Dhamma, the redress for all your ills, the redress for all your ills is vichara, 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 tattva vichara. You say you have seen, where is it registered? In your mind. Who questions it? Your intelligence. So it is a matter between your thinking mind and introspecting intelligence. The answer to this grief, the answer to these questions, naturally lies in the intelligence. If the intelligence has to bring the answer, you have to engage it in introspection. Let the intelligence take up the question and dedicatedly pursue it, pursue it, pursue it. 
This is a voyage of knowledge. The intelligence takes up and pursues. Until at last, the object or the subject of knowledge is gained in full, direct, personal measure. Vijarahat tikshnata amitya dhiv pashyati padam padam dhirgha samsara rogasya vijaro himahoshatam Vijarahat tikshnata amitya dhiv pashyati padam padam dhirgha samsara rogasya vijaro himahoshatam I would like every one of you to learn this verse. If you are ready, I will teach you. Chanting it even 20, 30 or 40 times. When the process of introspection becomes intense, it really becomes hot. Mark my words. When the process of introspection grows in intensity, in depth, and it really heats up your mind and intelligence. Trikshnata Amitya. It becomes intensely deep, wholesome, 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 powerful, vibrant, energetic, active, active. Then dhihi pashyadi padam padam. The intelligence attains, attains the supreme abode, the destination. When the introspection grows sufficiently well, that introspection itself results in enlightenment. <coughs> For this incurable disease called worldliness, which has been persisting for a very long time, truthful introspection is the only medicine, nothing else. Vijara tikshnata ametya dhiv pashyadi param padam dhirgha samsada rogasya vijaro himahaushata. I am sorry, extremely sorry, that all of you have the intelligence, but none of you is using it. Like iron left free becomes rusted, I think your intelligence is getting rusted. <coughs> you don't know its potential and you don't know how it has to be dedicatedly pursued, used and employed. Newton saw an apple fall, not one, many apples fall from the tree. Many others also saw. All of them picked them up and ate the apple. Newton did not pick up. He stayed under the tree. To notice that apples hanging in different places of the tree were all falling perpendicularly to the earth. And he started wondering why the apples are falling and not fleeing. The imagination, the introspection did not leave him. He went on thinking and thinking ratiocinating for an year. Before, by then, he was able to know that there is a force of gravity exercised by the earth and it is that gravitational pull that makes every apple come to the surface of the earth. My dear souls, this is the way of introspection. I am wondering whether you will understand it, you are sensitive enough to the knowledge that introspection is very invaluable and that is the real core of sadhana. This is called a voyage of knowledge which the intelligence alone can take up. I told you yesterday about prasthanatrayam. Our whole spiritual life is recorded, 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 documented, documented in prasthanatrayam. Documented there in Prasthanatraya. We use the word spirituality, spirituality. None knows the meaning. 
what is spiritual otherwise what is everything everything is material our body is material world is material panchabhutas are material so we are a material piece a material mass we are surrounded by material objects of the world spirituality or spiritual is different from the material matter is inert it does not have any consciousness or sensitiveness it cannot comprehend anything <coughs> it cannot generate an experience whereas every moment of our life we are experiencing even unconsciousness is experienced by us this experiential nature of our life is only because we are spiritual and not material what causes this experientiality certainly not the body but something different from it and inside it that is the spiritual presence which animates and activates the body leading to all kinds of experiences including the sensory perceptions mental thoughts intellectual reasonings and ego assertions that is called spirituality let me stop hari om tas hari om tas hari om tas jai guru jai guru.